Good Wednesday evening, everyone. I hope everyone is thawing out and uh, getting out from under all that snow that we've gotten. What's up? Everyone's saying hello on the old YouTube. I love seeing everyone just getting reacquainted from Australia to Hawkins County to everywhere in between. Irish F. I recognize your name. It's good to see you back. And all the regulars, so happy you all are joining us. Um, we've got a fun night tonight. We'll talk a little bit about, we forgot to talk about last week, but since the Edison show is coming up this weekend, we thought we'd talk about Angler's Coffee a little bit. That's uh, something fun. We're going to be tying Craig Matthews, um, Scotty's Midge. And I was telling Katie, I didn't realize this, but Scotty uh, is from Tennessee. The gentleman that Craig named this fly after is from Memphis, Tennessee, I believe. And that's where my dad's from. So maybe my dad knew Scotty. Who knows? Um, but what's up, everyone over on, Inst on Instagram? Please come over and join us uh, on YouTube if you can. Love to have you hop in over there to join in the fun. So Barry, Bill, Chris, Five Solace, Michael, Al, Wes Hikes the Smokies, peace out to you and Steve, everyone in the world, hello. So I've been kind of on a, a, a kick on tying midges, especially dries. Uh, as you all know, we've tied Pat Dorsey's Pat's midge. I don't think we've tied Matt's midge. We've tied the Zelon midge. We've tied a bunch of different ones down to, I think, a size 24. And uh, Jim... Wilson, J, J, w, J. Wilson, I can't remember his, his the last number, but he uh, came over at the Virginia Fly Fishing Show a couple weekends ago and said, can you see these size 26, 28 hooks? And I said, well, barely. He said, well, you can have them because since you've been tying these little midges, I can't see them. So we're happy to pick up some, some even smaller hooks. Um, and the main reason that I've gotten in, in the kick of doing it is because it is winter. We got a ton of snow. We're going to have a lot of runoff this weekend, but I should be able to go high, high up in some of the tailwaters, and there should be some midges popping off, especially with these warm days. And um, the, uh, the Trout 30 got me off my off my game, off what I was going to say. Um, when you start seeing those little rises, I, about four months ago, I was fishing some little betises, and uh, I had one teeny tiny size 22, 24 uh, little midge. And I threw it, tied it on there, and that was all they're eating. So size 20 and 22 was not working at that time. So I started tying uh, midges. And uh, as Jeff Rowley knows, when we were out there, um, yeah, thank you for being the welcoming committee, Jeff. I appreciate that very much. I uh, keep on that. I'm surprised Freddie hasn't jumped on the welcoming committee. He's on the closing committee. Um, that's Freddie's job. Make sure I don't forget anything. Um, but uh, Jeff Rowley was with me, and we started throwing some teeny tiny flies, throwing the, um, actually that was a betas, but it worked really well. So we'll show you the Scotty's image we're going to tie. Katie will switch this over and uh, to the vise. This is a size 20, and this is as small as we're going to go. We're going to tie this size 20, and we're going to tie size 18 as well. The pattern is very simple. You've got this little red shock right here that when Craig ties it, he uses Coachman Red Zelon yarn. Uh, I'm going to be using, because this is the closest thing I've got to the Coachman Red, I'm only using this, this uh, Rust EP Trigger Point Fibers here, but it says Rust, so this is very, very red, as you can tell. Um, we're going to be using for the dubbing, his Zelon dubbing, right? Cheer in, find the right color, in midge black. So that's what we're using there. And that is from Blue Ribbon Flies. 12 watt Semper Fly um, Pale Olive Classic Wax Thread. That right there. And finally, some compared on deer hair from Nature Spirit. So this stuff right here. Okay, there we go. Um, so that's what we're going to use. Show it at show, show IDs at the door. That's right. And we'll say hey to Jeff as you're logging into YouTube so he can uh, clock you. He can say hello. Um, <clears throat> all right. Actually, I probably would make the show a little bit quicker if uh, 
if if Jeff be like, hey, pay attention, John, quit messing around. Um, but anyway, so the hook I'm going to be using is the Tiemco 2488. And as I said, it'll be a size 1820. But before we get started, Katie, do you have, oh, let me, do you want to talk about this or do you want me to talk about this? Uh, you can talk about it since you have it over there. Okay. So I, I know a bunch of you all are going to the Edison show, the Edison fly fishing show this coming weekend. And my name Philip, a couple of y'all asked, Hey, Joshua, um, about Atlanta. I am planning on being there Saturday. So shoot us a note on Instagram. What's up, Devin? Uh, yep. It's melting here as well. Uh, we, we still got a teeny bit left. Now it's just a mud hole everywhere. But at the Edison show, English Coffee is going to have a stand set up or a booth set up, and they'll be giving out free samples. Um, so the one, everyone that's listening, and tell your friends, tell everyone, the one um, kind that I would like for you to go over and try is this stimulator blend coffee right here. doesn't cost a dime. Just go and drink your coffee. Now, this is going to be for you guys who first thing in the morning, you need an extra jolt. It is strong. It has got a major flavor, major uh, whiz bang to it. But even it does taste really nice. But what's special about it is the fly itself. Does that look kind of familiar for those of y'all that have been following us and watching us? That is, and I'll have to read on the sign, but it says, tied by John DeMuth, photographed by Katie DeMuth. So this is our stimulator that we tie. And I've actually got it right here. This will be kind of cool. Here is the exact fly that is on right there. That's the fly that, that Katie took a picture of right there. Um, so it's kind of cool. Um, but love it if you went and tried it. If you like it, buy some. If you don't, hey, no big deal. Just tell them that you saw it here. But that's pretty, pretty neat. Um, until I break out sweat. It has got a, a lot of... Uh, Caffeine. Thanks, Keisha, Joseph, and Nan. I don't know how many grams this has, but um, but it's it's definitely got some. Um, and Howie's gonna be there. Uh, he's gonna be manning the booth. So Fisher's flies right there is gonna be the one that's manning the ang the Angler's Coffee booth. They've got two other. Uh, if you're not more of the super robust, bold, extra caffeine coffee, they've got two other kinds that uh, they'll be giving out. Might go over and check them out. I wish we were going to be at the show so we could show it, but I thought it was kind of cool because I've got the exact stimulator that we photographed right here for the fly, for the bag coffee. So I thought that was kind of cool, didn't you, Katie? I did. I definitely thought that was super cool to actually see that there and get throughout the show. Oh, cool. Well, and Joe, Joe is the owner or one of the owners of um, Angler's Coffee, super awesome, cool dude. We met him, I think it was at the Virginia show last year, and then hung out with him at Edison. Superman. Um, so give him a, uh, go tell him hello and, and hang out with him, and he'll hook you up with some goodies. Bring some for me from the show. Jeff's I need a hot chocolate for us non coffee That's what, Katie's been drinking some of it, but she's more of the medium roast. We switch it back over to the, main camera and you tell me when you're done you can show pictures when take your time i can talk um but um yeah katie has actually been starting to drink coffee every now and then but she's she's with you truman on the tea or coffee or hot chocolate um but so what else do i want to talk about um she's gonna show pictures in a second i'm gonna pull this fly out of the vise here is what I noticed that Charlie's fly box had these. I got a restock of these, and I know we've got other fly shops that watch. And if you all are watching or want to send us a note to tell people where to get them, feel free. But these Myron boxes that we got this one at Charlie's fly box is what I keep these midges in along with other small drives. Um, so if you can believe it, these really small from 20 and smaller, so 20, 22, 24, and 26s. Here's my box, see if you can see it real well. It's all that's in this, just this one container here. That's just all different kinds of, of uh, midges. So this is a good way to um, store them. And one that's teeny tiny. Number two, my betas is, is, and all these different um, uh, dry flies. If I leave them shoved in foam for, I mean, it's been a month since I've been fishing. This has been like a, been a major drought. Um, 
if if I don't, what's up, Ryan? Can, oh, you can't watch this on Instagram, on YouTube. You can watch, you just can't talk. What's up, Smoky Mountain Angler? Hop over on YouTube, on YouTube, Chad, or that might be um, I might be someone else. Um, sorry, I'm not chatting with you over on Instagram though. Um, but Instagram, come over and watch on YouTube. You'll see a lot better and hear a lot better. There's a lot more people over here talking. Um, but anyway, the those boxes they won't crush your hackle if you've got CDC flies where it's nice and poofy. If you just cram them in a phone box and it sits there for a few months or longer, in some cases, before you pull it out, it's just not the same. So to be able to leave your flies loose like this, just uh, I mean, you can leave them in here for a long, long time, then um, grab them as you want. As you can see, that this side is more like sulfur colors, and this side is more betas and uh, midge colors. So I'll try to do better in a box. I told Katie, I was like, I could probably sell this for like $50 or something. And she was like, maybe. Like, dang it. I was like, mm hmm. Well, honey, are y'all ready for your pictures? Picture time? Mm hmm. All right. Katie's going to show some pictures from last week. Tell everyone how you got the pictures. Well, I got the pictures in a few different ways. Um, the first way is by going to Instagram and taking a look at the ones that you all tagged us in the picture and screenshotting those. And then also some of you all emailed us our pictures um, for the show at Demi the Fly Fishing at gmail.com. And that's another way that I got the pictures. And um, I can't really think of any other ways that I got the pictures. So, yeah. Okay, so email them to us. They can uh, <laughs> or tag us in the photograph on you on Instagram. All righty, so let's show show the and actually this one was texted to me. This was right. This was the first picture that I saw um, tonight and put on the computer because it's a very special fly that came from Bear, um, which is um, Sergeant Bass Fisher's precious girl, and she tied this one her very own self, and I love it. And I'm so happy that we got to share it. Thank you, Bear, if you're watching tonight. Hope you're doing great. So thanks, Bear, for this gorgeous little fly with a pink wing and lovely tail, lovely hackle work, lovely body. I mean, I, can't, I have nothing to say except for perfection, honestly. Would you agree? Absolutely. Um, so we also have... Um, a few more to share. So let's see. How about David Smith's Thunderheads? Chocolate Thunderheads, it looks like. With a little hot spot on the tail. And um, Ken B, who was on here quickly, and then I saw him have to get off. So Ken, if you're still here, awesome. If you're not, I'm sorry that we missed missed you while you were here. But um, some, some of Ken B's Thunderheads. And then he also sent this fabulous picture of just pretty much everything he's been working on. So it's sort of like an array of awesomeness. <laughs> so so Joe Sergeant Bass Fisher said his daughter is cheesing big time oh, right now. She's smiling. Um, for sharing all of that. And I mean, Ken, like this is just the epitome of only people who love to tie flies would understand this picture. It's like, look at my stuff. Yay. You know? <laughs> Um, and then Al, A-L-C, Al, sent us some cool photos. I like this one. It's just neat. Again, like Ken's picture, only people who type lies would like understand like setting up a picture like so this. You, you got to throw, show off your new gear totally, too. Totally, totally get it. Totally understand that. Can totally see like spending some time in your day to put that together and it's okay. It's great. Um, so I love that one. And we also got another one from Al with the Thunderheads sitting on top of the rocks. We have this one from Bear Grass Leather. Cool version. And Bear Grass Leather also um, put out, just as a point of interest, I noticed on Instagram, a really cool looking wallet. Yep, that had a color combo wallet. 
Yeah, that had a had the fly on it, the dry fly. The wolf. It, he's got a wolf series of wallets, and because of the thunderhead, I think he came up with one that's either a different color or it had an extra pocket on it. I cannot exactly remember, but yeah, bear grass cool. leather. Check it out. I've yeah, actually, you, if you guys haven't um, checked out bear grass leather on Instagram, it's bear grass leather. Lots of cool uh, handmade leather items. Yeah. Which we happen to have several things. I, I've had a wallet from there for what, th two years, three years? Yeah. It's been fun. It's been yeah. good. It's held up real well. So this one is Billy Bucks. And we, uh, well, Bill Brasiers. Chattooga Fly Shop also sent us a couple of pictures. One, of course, the Thunderheads here. And well, there was another Thunderheads, but I just, I had to, I had to narrow it down. So I've got this. Like this one. I like this one. I like the golden body. That's that's why, because you said this was your favorite of the two. It is my favorite, and I can't remember. They call it something, but I can't remember what. Um, but Chatuba Flash Shop also sent um, a picture of the book that we were working out of last week that we all talked about. And, of course, you've got the flies on the front of it here. Those actually, those flies are not actually on the no. picture of the book. That, that was put on there by them. And I know it looks backwards, but um, that's... It's just, um, I didn't do this picture. John took a screenshot and put it on here. So, the Katie Scott with Lid Rig said that we can just send or everyone can send the flies to him and for safekeeping. Awesome. Okay. So, um, <laughs> while, yeah, while you guys, so yeah, just for safekeeping, there yes. you go. Lid Rig right there. So, check out Lid Rig. And, um, but yeah, so this was the book by Roger Lowe the fly pattern guide um, to the Great Smoky Mountains that we talked about last week that actually has the Thunderhead and the Chocolate Thunderhead patterns in it. Um, and even though I think it's out of print, there's, there are fly shops that still carry this book. And it looks like perhaps Chattooga Fly Shop carries it. So check out those guys if you are interested still in, in getting a copy. Um, we also have Freddy's. And I, I every time I see Freddy's pictures, they get better and better. I love his camera work. It's stunning. Absolutely stunning. Gordon Ramsay. Gray Ghost. Another one here. And we've got Orion. Ryan's. What like is Ryan? Too. Ryan cool is background. Ryan is on Instagram right now. So since we're showing, let me let me show you Ryan. Here is your fly being shown on YouTube. <laughs> so there it is. Um, and then we had Steve Gates, another cool pick. Blue background is always, if you're just starting out taking photos of your own flies, even if it's just with your phone, blue background is always a solid just start out. It's a good background, this light blue. Um, and then Jim's picture that he shared with us, Jim Wilson, um, and this is actually from the fly show that we were at, the Virginia Fly Fishing Wine Festival just a couple weeks ago. That that's a lot, but thanks guys for sharing your pictures. I really love looking at everybody's stuff. And again, just send your stuff to Lidrig. They'll hook you up. Um, if you haven't seen Lidrig stuff, check it out. It's pretty cool. Awesome stuff. Magnets galore for keeping those flies where they are supposed to be. So there you go. All right. Well, cool. Thank you so much, Katie, for uh, that rundown. We actually got quite, I guess, since we were off for like a month, there's a lot of people who played catch up. We got a lot of photographs this yeah. um, this go around. Oh, Lidrig's going to be in, in Edison as well. So um, it's your booth. So, um, someone asked if we're going to be in Atlanta. I'll be in Atlanta on Saturday. And both of us wish we were coming to Edison to see everyone, but it's kind of busy for us. Um, so we say we get to tie in. I think that's a great idea. All righty. So um, as I said, we're going to start with the TMCO 2488 in a size 18. We'll start huge. And um, uh, if you've been watching it all, a lot of my advice for new tires, you know, brand new tires, but for tires in general, when they want to try to get better, is tie smaller than you think you'll use. Because, like, I'll probably fish this. Well, the in the Umqua catalog, and this is a commercially available pattern from Umqua, you can buy this in size 18 and 20. And usually that's a, usually that's a good idea of what the fish are going to be eating, usually. 
Um, but if I try to tie this in a size 22 or 24 and I can get it somewhat good, this size 18 is going to be huge and be no problem at all. So try to tie something when you're tying your patterns, tie a little bit smaller than you might need. And that'll make it make the ones you need that much easier to tie. So as I said earlier, we've got the separate fly 12 odd class of wax thread and pale olive. The way I'm going to put this, I'm going to hook my thread around like this. And I'm going to wrap it back just to start the thread. Wrap it back about seven turns or so, pop off my thread, and we're ready to rock and roll. Um, let's see. Now I'm going to get my shuck material. And I'll make sure when I pull everything that my tips are lined up square and see how they're not right now because this is a small, or not super small yet, but it's a good habit to get into to not lose your scissors. You want to uh, repeat the hook again, please? This is the TMCO 2488 in a size 18. So I'm going to bring my thread up like so. Do a little pinch wrap, pull straight down, bring it up again, and I'm going to bring this back so I don't cover up my um hook eye when i wrap forward so see i've got it captured in now no big deal oh over on instagram let's see get you all zoomed in a little bit where is that fly there it is all right <clears throat> yeah all right we're looking good so i'm gonna hold my my uh, material up and with touching wraps work it back now Unlike a lot of these need to be touching. I don't want to leave a whole bunch of material hanging out the side. And unlike a lot of the uh, flies that I tie using this hook, I'm not going to go down the hook bend very much. They want to make sure that my thread is nice and flat. So I'm going to bring it back up. As you can see, see how flat that is? Um, Touch wraps again, cover this up. And because that's so flat, see how the, the bottom is pretty pale olive and the top's kind of, when, when I'm looking at it, it's somewhat reddish. So I want to cover up that reddish. So I'm going to make sure my thread is super flat again. I'm just going to try to just do one light layer of thread. Now this is not something that Craig Matthews does because he just does one layer, but I want to cover up that. I'm not really building much bulk at all, if any bulk, but I've got more of a green or that pale olive color there. You want to um, show the shuck material? On sure. Um, Craig Matthews calls for the Coachman Red uh, Zelon. And I don't have Coachman Red Zealon, so I'm using the Rust Trigger Point Fibers, but just like a, a reddish color that has this sheen to it. And I think the sheen's got more to, to do with it than, than a lot of things, but the sheen, this this Trigger Point along with the Zealon is going to uh, float somewhat well. But this sheen looks really nice in the sun, and it kind of catches and reflects light, so... I don't know if you can see that like glimmer, but it's not, doesn't have like a material in it, like a flash in it. It's just, just kind of flashy. Um, and this is the, the EP trigger point fibers. There you go. All right. So now we're going to pull out our midge black Zealand dubbing. And I'm just trying to keep this as close to um, Craig Matthews pattern as I can. You can make substitutions all day long. Do whatever like you think that you, you want to do, um, but and I'm gonna make this too big. Starting off with, um, so I've got a pretty long noodle for as small as this fly is. So I'm gonna work this back from about there, and I want this to be kind of chunky. That's about it. So you see how, how that's pretty big and chunky there. Maybe a touch much, but it's okay. We're going to brush it out and make it a little extra extra buggy. Craig Craig Matthews says don't trim any of this any of these fibers off. Um, what's up, Chris? Yeah, glad you found it. Um, for you out there, thank you, Freddie. 
Um, so these uh, the, these guard fibers and all this, the Xelon, this, that little gray or white fiber there is that Xelon. That's what makes it Xelon dubbing. Um, on these midges with the legs and the wings and the, the little antenna, um, he wants all that to stay there. So one of the reasons that I want to leave it buggy is when I do two reps here, when I tie this wing in, I'm going to go one, two, right on top of each other, pull tight. See how, see how you can barely see that um, thread there underneath. And then to lock the, the deer in, I'm going to do two more and tighten. That's it. So you can, you can see it there. You can see that thread. And I'm going to cord it up so it won't be quite as bad. But if my um, little ball of dubbing was really tight, that, um, that thread work would be much more apparent. All right, so let's switch over to the side here, and we'll <clears throat> do some stacking. Got my smallest stacker that I've got. There's actually two. I've been using these these loon ones a lot recently, um, and I'm big on choosing the right size stacker for your job. Okay, um, so what I mean by the right size is the size of the hole. So. You can see how the Renzetti one's a little bit smaller than the Loon one. This is the smallest Loon one we've got. So I've been using the Renzetti and also my new one from um, Kelly Gallup's place to slide in his, uh, I can't remember the name of it. But the point is you want to get one with a small hole. Both of them got their advantages. Um, I'm just going to put my, make sure you can see that okay. Put my scissor tips in, grab my little clump that off and really i don't want to say any more than you think you need but the first few that i tied i was kind of surprised i needed more than i thought i need because this is like a midge and we're almost doing a comparadon wing on it um but we want to the main reason that we're uh cleaning this out is the clean deer hair without the under fur and everything in it's going to stack 10 times better and it's also going to float better because it's not one of the under fur absorbs water. Um, but the biggest reason is just so it will stack nice and cleanly. This is what kind of dubbing that you use. This is Zelon dubbing. This came from Blue Ribbon Flies. Um, but I believe it's just uh, like hair's mask with some Zelon mixed in. But you can use whatever, whatever kind you want. This is just what Craig uses. Hello from Denver, Dan. Oh... Now I can't read. Looks crowded. It is crowded over on YouTube. All right. So we're stacked up. Pull this over. Let's switch back over to the little dude. You can see the my tips there. Nice and lined up. I don't mess it up here. Dropped a few, but we'll hopefully make it work. Tell you what, if you have not tied on the on TV with lights going every which way, it's a little different. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist my thread because I want it to be nice and corded. I want it to be as strong as possible because this is 12 ounce. This is not nano silk or anything. It's just regular old, regular thread. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let my tension off and see where it goes. See how it's kind of going forward a little bit? I'm going to give it a little twist because when I let it go, I want it to go back or just not do anything when i let it loose see how it's not really doing anything now not really anyway measure from my tips to the back of the body to the back of the the abdomen which is unfortunately where the shock hits right there so right that's about where i want to tie it off and i want my thread to be right in the middle of this ball if i if i if it goes forward and goes here and slides down, then the, the clump of deer is going to cover up my hook eye. Um, if it slides back to the back of the ball, then the, the wing is not going to look, it's not going to function or look correct. So roughly here, bring it back, see I went forward there. One, two, straight up, kind of the same path. I'll pull tight, fan it out. Do two more wraps, just one on top of each other. 
hung in the wing is where the patterns go sideways for me. Well, Joe, let's let's get it where you learned something a little bit tonight. Make it a little bit easier for you next time. I haven't let go of my butt ends yet. So this hand here, my finger you can see has not let go yet. Take my scissors, hold it up, put them in there. It's okay if I cut some of the other side off, but you know, not much. I'll hold it a little bit at an angle, cut it off. So I'll leave some of those butts in there. Um, I didn't mean to leave that in there and I didn't mean to leave that in there, but other than that, I'm leaving these butt ends in because it'll, that'll add to the flotation of it. Okay. I'm just pulling tight, bring all this back, bring my thread up behind the hook eye because I corded my thread up right now, as you can see, I'm uncording it because whip finishes don't like super tight, th tightly corded thread. Four and five. If that was still corded up really, really good. That would have popped off. Let's not forget to cut our shuck. And this is going to be shorter than you think. I like that. And there we go. <clears throat> so that is our... And the neat, neat thing about this is you can grab this wing, manipulate it so it can go forward. This right over it. You can really pop it up like this, however you want. And don't worry about like, and that's one thing Craig's big on. Like, see that big, that little little bit of a chunk there. There's a couple little. Katie has this zoomed way in. You can see every single fiber. And if you really want to, I guess you cut that one off because it's kind of long. But for the most part, leave the fibers alone. That's what gives this fly some action. Um, don't worry about manhandling it. This is not meant to be a perfect um, like Instagram purdy fly. It's meant to catch fish. And that right there, the the um, the silhouette is what we're looking for. And um, yeah, so that's it. Um, that's it, the end. The end, right. But someone said they had problems with the hair. So let's do, we'll make it smaller, we'll do a size 20. Um, we're going to do the exact same thing. And um, how about this, Katie? Why don't we... I think it'll line up nicely for next week. Next week, you guys can make an attempt on these. We'll go ahead and throw in the, the ones from this week. We'll draw a winner for the $25 J-Stalker gift card. That'd be okay? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Um, so this is a size 20. Oh, there we get So two wraps of the wings. Yep. Um, kind of flint you put on it. Dan, I... Um, Definitely for any of my flies that are not CDC, I'll, I'll use uh, Aquel, Balloon Aquel. I don't think I've got it sitting around here. I've been using the um, the liquid stuff from Loon. What's it called? We gave some away the other day. It's good for the, the really small ones and the I can high float, something float. Now we've got some over here. But uh, the Aquel is what I've used for years. It works great. And then I'll just use a... a Frog's fanny, or um, the I, I can't, or, dude, it's one of those days I can't think of names. The Timco dry shake, um, to after it gets Why? fly dip. There you go, Dan. So I've been using the um, Aquel for years for non CDC, the Locksure for CDC. Um, those two are my gels to start with. Once they get soaked, I'll use the dry shake to dry them out. Now the fly dip is I've been using that the past six months or so. That works really works really well. Um, you can use that liquid fly dip after it's wet and it dries them out. Pretty cool. But if it was just like if you're going to get something for the first time, you can't go wrong with a quail unless you're um, using CVC. All right. So yes, uh, two reps. So I'm doing when I'm tying this in. Get your measurement right. Get nice. Get your your hair clean so it stacks well uh and then you do one wrap that first wrap you're not compressing much at all just enough to have your thread not slide around so tight enough to be touching but not flaring the deer put your second wrap right on top right on top where that went then pull towards you as you're still holding on so you're still holding on your butt ends pull towards you and now flare the wings up that's the way i do uh, Elkhart caddises is the way I do just about everything. Two wraps, pull tight. Then depending on the pattern, you might run some wraps of thread through the butt ends. In this case, 
two more wraps on top of each other and pull it tight and then it's locked in enough for you to cut the butts and then whip finish. Yeah, you need to start banging these things out because Gary's here. Oh, Gary's here. Okay. This literally, I think Craig said it takes him like three minutes to tie these. So we'll go and we'll, we'll bang this one out real quick. So same thing. Take our thread, start right behind the hook eye. And all I want to do is start my thread just like this. I'm going to grab my shuck. And you guys, the you guys asking questions, and I'll, Joe, I'll try to go slow when I'm putting the wing and preparing the wing. You guys asking questions is one of the things that makes it funner. <laughs> Um, so same thing as before, pull my butts. You can see right there where they're not quite lined up perfectly. So I've trimmed off the, the, the ends, pinch wrap, pull it to where, I'm going to put a couple wraps just to be on the safe side, pull it so it's not going over the hook eye. Make sure I've got a nice flat thread. Thank you, Jeff. See, Jeff's in charge of attendance. And and uh, um, Freddie's already worked on the uh, the like and subscribe thing, so that's awesome. And Jeff's just keeping everyone else in line when they check in, check in at the door. He's our bouncer, giving out armbands. Okay, so you can see there, it, there's a little bit of taper because I pulled it back a little bit. Not a big deal. I'm gonna, but I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going, to, I'm going to make sure my thread is flat. And that's something that I overlook a lot, just twisting it. If you can't, what's up, Eli? Um, fancy seeing you on here. <laughs> so if you're trying to figure out how to get your thread flat and you are tw keep twisting it, you're not sure if you're getting it right, you'll take a bodkin like this and just let it, I'm letting go of my bobbin, and then you're, I'm bringing it towards me. You see how it gets flat. Let's do it. The you can see go back to the side. I think I'm I mean, as you can see better. Um, you can see how my bobbin starts twisting. That the way it's twisting is is uncording. So if you do this, that gets it just right. And you don't have to do that every single time at all. But if you're like, man, my my um, thread's not flattening out. It could be that you spun it too far one way, and you need to go the. Uh, What's up, Michael? We got the whole crew up in here. Um, so like I said. You can see how, how that's super flat. All I'm doing is just putting color down right now. I'm not building any bulk. And, um, yeah, so we got that done. And I don't like that one bump in there, but, hey, the fish probably won't mind. And this is live, so why, why don't you go fix a bump? No, you just need to bang these things out. Oh, honey, you're getting me going. All right, so we got a dummy again. Grab it. Now remember, we don't want this super, super thin. Um, as far as that went, I mean, for an 18, it's a very loose dummy noodle. For dummy noodles being concerned, it's pretty tight. But you see, we're kind of a kind of a big ball here for as small as it is. Remember? All right. So we've got it, the bare thread finishing right in the middle of that ball. You know, that is a Da, 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 da. Oh man! Okay, Eli. That's uh, like uh, uh, we, Kate and I went to Denver a few years ago, and we every time we see you guys there hanging out, we wish we could go back. Uh, it's just a big trip getting from one side of the state to the other. So let's uh, do some deer hair for Joe, not Joe, Sergeant Bass Fisher Joe, but the other one. There, there's two of them, believe it or not. So, Katie, you want to switch back over to the side? All right, so we've got our deer hair. Now, one of the things with these small flies, you want to make sure that this is compared on deer hair. Um, some places, like Blue Room Flies, doesn't have compared on deer hair. You have to go and look for it. So some of the things you want to look for, this is short hair. It doesn't necessarily mean it's perfect hair for compared ons. You want to look at, let's switch to the, to the hook. Um, you want to look at these tips, get them in focus. There you go. See how short the tips are. And there are black tips there, but they're very fine, super fine. I mean, think about it compared to the black tips of, oh, let's look at the stimulator. See how big those black tips are on the stimulator? There. Yep. 
see the black tips, those are super long compared to the black tips here. So that's going to mean that it'll flare much closer to the end of the, of the fiber itself. So kind of where my fingers are is where it's going to flare, whereas if it had long black tips, it wouldn't really get a good flare until you got farther down in the bundle. Does that make sense? Okay. So to get a um, to get our piece off, I'm just going to, I use my scissors. I just kind of find where I want to get in there, fold it up like this, open up my scissors, put them in there, and cut off. Now, I will try to cut off more than I think I need because it's easier to take a little bit out. Um, which that's, that's more than I need. But on this particular pattern, being this a midge, you'd think you'd just need a, hand, like a small pinch of fibers. But really, I found you need more than more than I thought. Um, so I'm going to take it, get to where you can see it. I'm going to spin it to open everything up. Take my comb and use whatever you want. If you want to use your fingers, it just takes longer. Um, pull it, comb it out. You know, you're coming out short fibers, you're coming out under fur, you're coming out broken fibers. You're getting rid of everything but straight, perfect deer hair fibers. We're going to look at it, make sure there's nothing like too messed up on it. I'm going to give it one more comb. So we can get rid of it. I'm going to try to thin it out some now. And that looks about right. So on the first one, I use the Renzetti stacker. And I can't find my doodad. Someone could probably tell me to say it's right there. Since I can't find it, we'll use the slide in stacker just to show a different version. So it goes in like that, goes in that top hole, and then you quick finish round up gathering. Absolutely. So we've got it stacked. And like I said, use whatever kind you want. It doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't matter. They've all got uh, good uses, but if you, it, if you use this one for this technique, for the small, it, it will not look good. You want to have, this is like really where having multiple sizes is pretty, pretty apparent. Um, or you can be old school and just not use a stacker and say, you know what? A fish are not going to really care that much if a couple of fibers are out of whack. All right. So now I'm going, I'm going to try to get so you can see it. There you go. So we've got our, our stack here, and I'll move it here to the, the hook itself so you can maybe see. A little bit out of focus, but I can't get any closer without dumping it out. But you can see that nice little black line of tips. That's perfect. I'm going to pull that out. Switch hands. Now we'll look at it and see what we're, how we're looking. Got one little thing there. All right, so this is really where... My uh, thread uh, thread control is important. It me it I'll be there. Yes, we have a big we'll have a big crew. Well, maybe we can set up a whip finish Wednesday table somewhere on Saturday. I heard someone already mentioned that. All right, so when I when I take my thread, bring it straight up, and then I'm just gonna, I'm not going to I'm just letting off the tension. Look where it goes. Give it a twist. So. It goes right where you want it. See how it's, it's not it's not flicking to one side or the other. Perfect. So I'm gonna hold on to my thread the rest of the time because I don't want it spinning. So on a on when you're doing this, and this is for Joe and I think Jeff or someone was saying something else about thanks for these deer hair tips. So this is for you guys. Um, I want to measure. So right now my tips are going right to my eye. Now look where the back of my where the shuck meets the body. And that's roughly where the hair, the, the color transition of the the tips are. Like, you know, like a, it's roughly right here. So I'm gonna take it, and if if I go to tie off, I'm gonna do this on purpose. See how it's sliding forward? See how like I'm sliding my thread forward? If I tied really tight right there, that would not be good. Not at all. So I can kind of angle my tips up a little bit, bring it tight. Still not doing real well, but I want to tighten up my I want to tighten my thread because I want to be corded. Oh, Justin, he could be cuddling with his wife. Thank you, Justin. That is so nice. Um. All right, so we're going to aim these tips up, up and around, bring it down. So now you can see my 
my thread is straight up, straight down. It's right in the middle of that ball of dummy. So right where I want it. If you want to, if you're like, well, you know, that was my wings a little short, which that's kind of what I was thinking. Before I pull tight, I can move it and redo it. Just kind of move it around. So I've got two wraps right there, holding my butt in. So I'm gonna pull, pull hard and pull tight. Now you want to kind of not do that. <laughs> Katie's probably going to like mm. blues her. She's like, really? Did you seriously see that? I did it on purpose. If you keep pulling Normally tight. Normally when that happens, it's a very loud like, ah! Oh! Son of a, like Chris sure, Farley. Like, I mean, you know, there's a reaction, a loud reaction. Like with like symbols in the air, you know? No, not that I never break it when I'm not live, but it is rare. It would have been odd if I would have tied these live and not broke something at least once especially going over this a few times i'm gonna pull this off because i want it to be done somewhat correctly let's start my thread here bring this back to right where i want to do it it should be good hopefully i'll hold that dubbing in there i should probably undo more than i'm undoing but Someone asked a little while ago on YouTube, they said, why don't you put super glue down on your pheasant tails? And my answer was, and Katie, you can just, we'll just try to zoom through this, make this a little quick. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I took like 10 minutes to explain, but I'm going to do it more in real time. Um, but they're asking why I don't put super glue on pheasant tails. And my answer was, well, I did put the wire on there and that's usually pretty good. And, and um, you know, I can get, I'll, I'll, I'll personally, I'll lose flies or I'll lose interest or I lose interest in the fly and I'm changing it before a fly actually wears out from something besides neglect. And what I mean by neglect is like forceps will tear up flies regardless whether it's son of a gun. How do I do that? Regardless whether it's um, glued or not. Um, and I don't like dealing with trying like making sure I've got super glue it's not dried out super glue if i didn't have to dial the tower super glue again it'd be okay that's just my personal thing use super glue absolutely this is pale olive yeah all right so pull this out grab our clump So we're going to stick it there, measure it. We're looking good. I like that. Tight cord up my thread. Make sure we go up and down. It's still not corded up. So if you don't know, corded up thread is stronger than super flat thread. So that's why I keep saying I'm cording it up. There we go. It's better. One, two, pull tight. One, two. I frayed my thread. That wasn't good. Getting all excited here. Um, hold this tight right here. Cut that off. Get one off. Pull this back. Now I'm going to pull all these frays down and hope I can get a decent whip finish in here. So if you do flares, Flat, fray your thread like I just did. If you'll try to get those loose ends away and don't do super big whip finish. That's four turns. And we got it. That'll usually save your, your, your whip finish. If you've got like a bunch of frayed up uh, fibers, then you're kind of up a creek. <clears throat> so you see how we did that? We didn't have... Um, the the thread i can't see without if the thread had jumped too far forward here been no good we've got dubbing in front behind dubbing's prop and swing up a bit we can also push it down if we want to depending on how we want to fish it you can pull it up wave it around and the super glue things like i'm not even putting um uh head cement on 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 these like they're going to work fine i'll pinch the barbs and i'll pull them out <clears throat> and then if I use use this one for a day, I can throw it away and be okay. I'm not like 
not too worried about it. There we go. Cut that off. And that is roughly, I've got some pieces of non-stuff there. Non-stuff. Uh, there is lots of new stuff going out this week. Uh, I tried, let's see if I can find this. This is kind of cool, Gary. Just do it, and I'm going to show a couple things, but while I'm showing this, if you've got questions about this or want me to have one more, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to show this right here. Here's our new micro glint color as well as micro favets. If I can get this to go in there. There's a micro favets. And uh, I can't remember what color micro glint that is, but... <clears throat> I was going to do calf tail, calf body hair for wings tonight. Just regular calf body hair. But I decided to wait for another another one for that. And here was a um, different color with some purple. See how it's got a little flashiness there. So, but I uh, figured I'd, I'd wait a little bit on that. Was in Germany in the Cold War. I wasn't inclined with his techniques, but knowing in England where he retired, we never talk. Carp, carp flies. I don't know what carp flies. I'm, what, I love it when you guys are just talking about something else. I don't know. Um, okay, so we'll just zoom this out here. Uh, Katie, what else did we have? As a recap, you'll switch back over to the main camera please yeah calf body is definitely a little bit easier than calf tail but I like I like look calf tail but calf body is good if you're in Edison go check out Angler's Coffee she got the simulator blend this is the what Katie and I worked on uh, the fly she took the photograph good coffee as well um if you tie up your flies you can email them to us demuthflyfishing at gmail.com or tag us on Instagram but tag the photograph on Instagram. If you just post in the comments, we won't be able to find it Wednesday night to share it. What's up, Ed? Um, and uh, and we'll love to share it next week. Next week, we will do a drawing for a $25 gift certificate to Jay Stockard. So you can pick up some new good, good materials. Um, and uh, we'll just draw from the people who sent us pictures one way or the other. Or go ahead and put a comment on the video after this, the YouTube video that is after it's posted and we'll put you in the list of the, um, uh, drawings. You'll change a private yet. How I've just, I've heard, heard all that. We came to fish in Italy in a kind of a private river. It wasn't really private. It was at a school. We we're teaching a tying class a few years ago in Italy. It was quite fun. Um, but anyway, thank you. Cultural experience. That's your cultural experience. That's right. Um, so, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We are uh, hopefully there's something that Jay Soccer doesn't have in stock right now that hopefully they'll have next week and we can do the fly that we're planning on doing. Um, but uh, you guys going to Edison, have fun. Those of you all that are going to Atlanta in a couple of weeks, I'll be there Saturday. So my plan is to be, to be there Saturday. Shoot us a message. Um, as Freddie's fly says right now, more like to be had. Please pound the thumbs up, the thumbs up. Um, if you don't, if you're not following us, we'd appreciate you following us, uh, liking the video, subscribing, whatever it's called. I'm still not good at this YouTube stuff, but really appreciate all of you guys. It's been so much fun tying with you all. Y'all watch me break thread and uh, make it work. So. I'll turn it over to, Kay to Katie, Gary, Dan, Joe, Ed, Truman, Nan. Would not be the same without you guys. Thanks, Freddie. Um, we'll see you next Wednesday night. Happy time, everybody. I hope you guys have a great weekend. See you next Wednesday.